cada innovación en, en el transporte de droga ha sido porque en un momento dado llega a un estado de crisis. Al principio del auge del narcotráfico con Pablo Escobar, lo común era que los aviones eh, salieran de Colombia y aterrizaran en pistas clandestinas, pues ya fueran los Estados Unidos o, o México. Posteriormente eso se puso muy difícil y eran capturados. Después de eso se comenzaron a hacer los vuelos tirando la cocaína desde los aviones. Pero hubo muchos accidentes, llegó a morir mucha gente. Posteriormente es el, el, la utilización de lanchas rápidas. Las lanchas rápidas empezaron a tener muchos problemas. El 50% de las lanchas se caían. Básicamente era como estarse tirando un volado, ¿sí? un cara cruz con las lanchas. Entonces las organizaciones en Colombia decidieron que tenían que haber una cuestión más segura para el transporte de la droga. Entonces nace la idea de los semisumergibles, sin tener muy claramente cómo iban a funcionar. Rear Admiral Christopher Tomney, director of Joint Interagency Task Force South for the U.S. Coast Guard, said, well over 95% of the drugs are moving on the water via container ships, non-commercial vessels, pleasure boats, sailboats, fishing boats. They also have fast boats which try to outrun our law enforcement assets. The wall won't stop 95% of drugs from entering the USA, and sending troops in Mexico won't help either. As of 2014, there were 11.1 million unauthorized immigrants in the US. Only 5.8 million of them were Mexicans. That comes from Pew Research Center. The Pew Research Center concludes As overall net immigration from Mexico declined, immigration from Asia did not flag. Indeed, it's increased somewhat. As a result, among all newly arriving immigrants to the U.S., more now come from Asia than from Latin America, a change since 2008. The wall will not stop that. By preventing illegal immigration from Mexico, there will be more jobs for Americans. A study at Ball State University's Center for Business and Economic Research in 2015 found that trade accounted for just 13% of America's lost factory job. The vast majority of the lost jobs, 87%, were taken by robots and other homegrown factors that reduce factory needs for human labor. What has also happened is that American companies, faced with high wage demands from workers, decided to have their manufacturing done in countries where wage demands were lower, such as Mexico and China. Unless Americans want to have much lower wages, these jobs are not coming back. And the wall will not change this. The wall will be built on the border with Mexico. From El Paso, which is 66% of Hispanic origins, to Brownsville, which is 91% Hispanic or Latino, the border is the Rio Grande. Texans will have to go to Colorado or New Mexico to view the Rio Grande. The property values on that border in Texas will plummet. The wall will deface Texas on its border with Mexico. The wall will cause that. Mexico will pay for the wall. Actually, Americans will pay for the wall. If the government adds a 20% tax to its imports in order to pay for the wall, Americans will pay 20% more for all goods imported. Great idea, this wall, no? 